From the center of the universe, Toronto, Ontario, Canada, this is the SDM Show with your host, Rob Cairns. The SDM Show focuses on business, life, productivity, digital marketing, WordPress, and more. Sit back, relax, grab your favorite drink, and enjoy the show. Here is Rob. Hey, everybody. I'm Rob Cairns. I'm the founder, CEO, and chief creator of Amazing Ideas at Stunning Digital Marketing. In this podcast, I talk to Burger Polly Hack, and we talk all things WordPress 6.5 and beyond. Grab a drink, enjoy the show. This podcast is sponsored by Stunning Digital Marketing, the agency that can help protect your WordPress website today. Go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com and see what we can do to help you protect your business investment. That's stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Hey, everybody, Rob Cairns here. And in today's podcast, I have my good and dear friend, Birgit Polly Hack from Automatic with me. How are you today? Hey, Rob. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much for inviting me and having me on yeah, your show I, again. I, yeah, so, I think this is the third or the fourth time. And I, I just love sitting down and talking to you because you understand working at Automatic, the WordPress um, ecosystem, more than a lot of people. And you care about the community, and that is really important in today's day and age. Well, thank you. Yeah, well, I started in the community when I was uh, an agency owner, So, and I started Gutenberg Times six years ago. Yep. Oh, yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so it's and, been a And if you want to learn more about blocks in Gutenberg, Gutenberg Times is the place to go. There is no totally. question it's on my uh, weekly read. I think the newsletter comes out Sunday now, right? Or Saturday, I can't. Yes. Uh, well, with the time zone, it's uh, probably Saturday still in, in the U.S. or at the East Coast U.S. when I kind of put it together. Sometimes it comes out on Sunday. Yeah, depending how my weekend goes. <laughs> yeah, time, time zones, what are they? Is the NADA a unique problem to all these digital nomads who all work online having to deal with this. You know, you and I were having this problem. We're trying to set up a reschedule this call and it's here's the time UTC and I'm I'm in the Google saying, give me what the time zone is in Eastern. And you're like, are you sure? And I'm like, <laughs> oh, it's uh it's uh it's an exaggerated by uh the daylight savings time changes that is different in the United States. Yeah, on a different day than in Europe. So there is this whole two weeks, yeah, where I don't know if I'm in the right meeting, yeah, when I <laughs> go online. So it's the time of pickup meetings. That so, oh, I'm late for my meeting, but what meeting is this about? <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. yeah so it's uh, it's interesting time. Time zones yeah, are the bane of my existence. <laughs> You know, I'm, you know, I'm almost to the point of view, I think we need to abolish daylight savings time and all these time changes and just leave them alone. And, you know, they were originally done for farmers back in the day, but all these farmers have lights and all kinds of stuff now. So the reasons are less and less to do it as far as I'm concerned. So I think it's time to move on from that. Um, yeah, you're lots, totally right. Yeah. Lots has gone on in the WordPress space, as always. We just had a release, so we were going to talk a little yes. bit about 6.5. Um, I was saying to you before we went to record, I think the release team did the right thing in holding this release back. And I think what they did very well was they communicated to the community why. And I think one of the things that is lacked in past releases, and I think it gets lost in the shuffle, is that communication to the community. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I think you're totally right. Yeah, the uh, communication discussions are public now. Yeah, the, the release uh, lead uh, channel is public on the WMAKE uh, Slack. And uh, but not everybody can read the, through this or on a be on core Slack. So having a summary on the discussions on the make blog 
um, is definitely helpful for anybody who who is interested in what the release is about and also have to kind of uh, time their changes and the hosting changes and with their clients and and knowing why things happen is so critical to um, support um, any of those changes yeah. yeah and there's a lot of good good people out there um, our mutual friend em, and your colleague Anne McCarthy puts out a, a, a WordPress truth document that to me is the most comprehensive document out there of what goes on in a release so I'm on that list. I don't even wait for it to show up in blogs like yours. I've already seen it by then usually. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, um, yeah. that that to me is invaluable for man. Um, there's yeah. people like uh, Courtney Robertson up at GoDaddy is a colleague of mine. And mm -hmm. uh, Courtney writes typically really detailed, this is what's coming up documents. There's a couple other people. I think those are all part of this whole PR cycle, if you want to call it right, or information cycle is a better word yeah. for it. Yeah, it's a, it's a new cycle. And I, I think the, the source of truth by Anne McCarthy is definitely supporting anybody who wants to write about things and who's in the news or wants to inform their clients about things. Um, and it, uh, But it's the fire hose. So sometimes you have to decide as a uh, as a user or as um, an agency owner, uh, how deep you actually want to go. But mm -hmm. if you have any doubt about um, any of, of those, um, <clears throat> yeah, Courtney Robertson was one. Leonardo and Grudu from Hostinger has always a, yes. a great um, uh, summary of what's uh, in the new release, as does Carlos Daniel from Kinsta. They're all really dive into um, the notes and all the uh, and for their for their clients, yeah. So it's very strict on on target audiences, yeah. Who is that important for? Um, and um, and supports that through the tagging on the source of truth. So uh, yeah, uh, but it's a fire hose. It's about ten thousand. It's a book, pretty much. Yeah, it was ten thousand words this time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So much in there. yeah. It's and almost whatever. turning into a mini journal. It really is. And uh, kudos, Stan, for doing that. I I know how much work she spends on doing it. It's a big deal. So it's a pleasure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Six five. Six five. We had some yes. changes. The biggest changes. I'm not going to get so much into what causes a delay because you know we all know it was technical. You can go read it. But the big thing in 6.5 uh, still is this whole bringing fonts back into WordPress. And I think the reason we're doing this is a lot because of GDPR compliance in, the, in Europe. I mean, and we, we're seeing more and more privacy-based rules that are governing how we do our business. What do you, what do you think about that? I would agree with that. Yeah, uh, the Google fonts that are sometimes um, embedded into themes. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, can we switch them off? Yeah, sometimes a um, a theme user doesn't have the choice or doesn't know how to do it. And with the font library, there is um, uh, independence for um, users to get beyond what the theme is um, offering as fonts. Um, you can also um, download from other foundries. Yeah, it doesn't have to be Google. It can be from um, other open source ones that don't track who's doing what. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, and, and also have some exciting other fonts on your site that you can um, enable without um, yeah, going into the theme to on code base to to get them on on your site so i think that's a real good it opens up the freedom for the designers as well as for the site owners um and uh yeah it was really a, a, a good thing but it took a while i think it was the first slated to get into um wordpress at 6.3 and then it was bumped yeah. to 6.4 and then it was bumped to 6.5. So having another delay on the fund library, um, thank God it was only a week, but it, yeah, it was kind of a, um, a little bit of a hot stopper. <laughs> yeah, for just, that big just, feature. Just a little bit. And I think what I would caution any other designer is, before you start playing with all these fonts, and it's, it's so wonderful that we have the flexibility as people say, it's doing WordPress your way, right? We all talk, yeah. talk about that in the community, which is what makes WordPress special. But what I would say is, if you're going to start playing with fonts, 
think really hard, does these fonts add to the user experience? And sometimes all these nice scripted, fancy Google fonts actually detract from that experience. So I think as a designer, you got to be really careful about how you do it and why. Yeah. And and designers normally know know that. Yeah. It's more like the um the the ones that are just passionate designers kind of want, want to change their site yeah. and kind of play around with things, as you say. Yeah, they, they get uh, carried away, but that's part of creativity to kind of go all in and then kind of scale it back to to something more. But it's uh but I I I think there is also some um so what I like is uh, Mary Baum has a, a series on the developer blog about fonts. Yeah. And um, so people like me who hasn't had a design um, um, education yeah, yeah. can read up about what are the technical terms, but also what does it do to my, <clears throat> to my text when I'm, um, mm -hmm when I'm using certain fonts, yeah, is, are these accessible? Are there something that, uh, and then, yeah, dyslexic person can read better or something like that to have a little bit more education. Um, and the, the series is, I think, in part two, but there's four, five, and six coming. So I'm, uh, there's, uh, stay tuned on the developer blog, uh, especially about fonts and about the design of fonts. And when you're working around fonts, please think about accessibility too. That's a big issue, right? It's like Absolutely. there are there are people who don't read right or are challenged. And accessibility just doesn't mean I can't read it. It means you're having problems accessing it for a number of reasons. So it's more than just being partially sighted or not. We have to think about that really hard, actually. Yeah, and uh, accessibility most of the time is also temporary accessibility. So yeah. if you, yeah, if you're sick or if you, um, yeah, you you hurt yourself on the arm, all of a sudden you are one armed, <laughs> kind of yeah. That, that's one of the thing. But I also find that um, when when I read a text online that is in all caps, I don't have the the help of the different size of letters to kind of guide me along what this word is meaning. So my my brain is has to read every single letter to put together the sentence. So all caps by by definition is actually something out of the um, 19th century when we only have typewriters and couldn't do any bolding or couldn't do any any italic. So and that's even the the basic of it. Yeah. And then when you when you have 15 funds on your website, uh, it kind of needs to have a hierarchy and a, a kind of a, a calmness to it. So the reading pleasure is not interrupted. Yeah, you're totally right, Rob. Yeah. Um, besides the fonts, what else um, attracts you to 6.5? What else do you oh. see compelling in there? Well, I'm definitely uh, really excited about the revisions that are um, yeah. uh are available now for style changes, template changes, and template part changes. Um, it also is a, a, a modern view on how what revisions can be. So I'm also, uh, that's actually looking forward into um, what post revisions will be once they are understand blocks. But this one is really uh, a great, and they the, the team did a, a fair amount of iterating on it through the Gutenberg plugin. Um, now you can have a summary of what the, the, the changes were in the right hand side in the in the sidebar. Um, it's a little bit hidden, but if you go to the style editor and then go on the right hand side, um, there is there are two uh, three icons on top and one of them is like a uh, like a clock or so. Um, that uh, those are your revisions, and you can see um, what has changed and how often it has changed, and um, uh, yeah, when it was. Yeah, and it's and you click on the revision that you see, and then you can say, okay, I uh, there's an apply button, and then you click on it, and then it will re revert to that particular change. Um, if if you say, well, <laughs> we all get carried away, right? When we when we try to to do our um, uh, theme and, and play around with colors, play around with styles and um, test all things out. And all of a sudden we are kind of 
oh yeah, this is taking it too far. Can we go back to certain things? And that was pretty much the the reason why we, we got the revisions in there. Um, in 6.4, it was a, a rudimentary uh, version of it. And now for 6.4, it's really a polished one and very robust. I actually was using the revisions tool yesterday, to be, to be fair. I had gone into a page I was working on on my own site. Yeah, so I'm as guilty of it as the rest of you. <laughs> and I, I took a page too far and I looked at it and said, oh, my God. <laughs> it was like, no. And I went and I backed up. And I'll tell you, it's really easy to do. So it, it saves the old days where you would take a backup, restore a backup. You, you know that game, yeah, right? Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, and now that the site editor is actually your styling tool for a theme, yeah, you need yeah. all the tools in there. Yeah. yeah. So, so a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of changes going on for the better, I think. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I like that the drop shadows are now available for some of the pl uh, other blocks. Yeah, it yeah. was um, available for uh, through the theme JSON file for designers quite. Uh, since 6.4 and for buttons, but now it's also available for columns and columns, the single column and the image as well. So it's now, um, a, yeah, so now you can also add it to um, an image on your blog or a, a gallery yeah, with an, uh, a list of images um, to have a little, and it adds another dimension to, to your site. It has some kind of a, a 3D uh, impression there. So I like that. Yeah, it's really How about cool. you? Um, they're the big things for me. I mean, I think for me, the fonts and the the revisions for me were actually the real big biggest things as a as a creative who spends lots of time in the WordPress dashboard. The revisions was like a win win win. So I'm yeah. I'm quite happy. Um, I know we've talked about it before. I've talked about it with Anne. Is there any changes to the media library coming down the road? Do you, do you know if that's coming soon or where where that's at? Soon is such a relative term. It's coming, yeah. And I know that contributors and developers are really discussing that. And um, uh, there is a, a kind of a, a, a certain vision now kind of forming amongst the team. Soon, I don't know. Yeah, but there is the, the media compo uh, committers, um, maintainers. They meet uh, quite often um, and kind of try to put the new admin design and the media to come together. But it's a huge revision part. Yeah, it's, uh, it's much bigger than the block editor, actually. Um, so I think it will still need some time. All good things need time. And the media library definitely needs some time. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is uh, in, in a very good shape, if you look at the data views, the list views yes. in the site editor, yeah, those are a good indicator ha um, how they're coming along. For, with the admin design on on those lists, yeah, to have the the grid layouts um, and um, for the templates and for the pages, uh, grid layout and page layouts and all that, how that flows in the site editor is something that is tested to maybe come uh, to come into the admin section further down the road probably not this year but yeah certainly next year at, at one point or the other uh, but it's definitely something to um figure out uh, because now they built the components that then also will be used for uh, extenders so those who build plugins those who build themes they can um, use those um, components as well and don't have to make um, the, uh, decisions about that because those are already available. Yeah? And the ex they, they expand uh, in terms of what are the bulk actions on. So if you, if you look at posts in a list, you can select a certain post and then you bulk edit them. You could either yeah, trash them. I love or that feature. Love yeah. that, uh, or here. you can change the kind of categories on that, and, um, and so each of those list views will have a different bulk action set, uh, depending on what kind of 
um, yeah. post type it is, be it a template part, be it a template or page, yeah, or style, uh, these kind of things. Yeah. So, um, and that is a reimagining the admin section. Um, and I, th I think it's a good thing that's all in the site editor. Com yeah, kind of. Um, uh, com 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 combined, but also enclosed without bleeding into other places on WordPress. Yeah. Yeah. And then so there's, can... of course, there's the whole issue about, I know there's been talk about changing UX on the back end a little bit down the road. There's some discussion <laughs> yeah. around that. And of yeah. course, the biggest one is collaboration when you're doing editing, right? That's coming soon. Yeah. And again, soon is relative because yeah. I think with collaboration, the challenges are, what do you do on some of these lesser hosting plans that don't have resources? I yeah. mean, that's yeah. going to be an issue. Yeah. And I think collaboration fits really well in an enterprise environment, not so much a small business environment, personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the, the prior priorities for that have shifted a little bit. Um, it's more like now the, the admin section, the design of admin and the media library, but it's also the data liberation kind of thing, the, yeah. the export yeah. and import. Yeah, there's a little bit, the, the, the focus shifted a bit since the state of the word in, uh, uh, from December in Madrid, where <clears throat> Matt Molovic announced the data liberation project that people um, can easily migrate from, or that's the goal for it, is migrate from, from a WordPress site to another WordPress site or from, um, uh, from an external content management system into WordPress or from WordPress into some other system. Um, and I think that has shifted a little bit um, the focus. Um, and, but I, I also see that the, uh, the extensibility of the block editor. And when, when we look at 6.5, there are three additional APIs that are very, very important for plugin developers and theme developers. Yeah. And they have been um, received very well by the community. Um, so I'm speaking about the, um, the block bindings API, which, yes. connects, yeah. which connects custom fields to blocks. And so you can read them out and in and out of it. Um, then there is the block hooks API, which allows you to, or the developer to add a block um, underneath a, a, another block. Yeah, like if you want to have a like button on, on the title or the headline of a block, uh, then you can get a like button in there. Um, or you could add another link uh, somewhere like a, an anchor link on a paragraph. Yeah. Um, and I know that uh, a lot of plugin developers have been waiting for those um, APIs to extend the block editor um, without having to create custom blocks. I think that was the big part of it was um, that uh, for every, every little thing, every little meta field, um, there was a need to create another custom block. And with the blocks binding API, um, some of it falls away because it's now built into core um, and it only needs some styling. And um, it can even be, there's even a little interface there for uh, the editor. Then when it's hooked up to a meta field, you see it. Um, and then the third API is just at the beginning of, what WordPress developers can do with it is the interactivity API. That is making WordPress um, react more like a, um, a, a single page application that you see out there, or uh, you don't have to have all those reloads of pages when you just filter down on certain things. Um, and there's some quite some interesting um, examples out there. Um, and, uh, Sure, those are not very interesting to the the site builders that are um, just using WordPress to build sites for others. But if you are a developer, um, those really help you with um, creating great site uh, experiences. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 like with the site builders, they're pretty well locked in their processes, so they're the ones. As you know, we have a tough time with a lot of them, not all of them convincing them that blocks is the way to go, right? Because they're locked into their 
page builders. It's a process thing. They've got it down. And uh, frankly, they don't have the time to invest in learning something new. Unlike, yeah. Who, unlike totally foolish agree. guys like me, who, as you know, <laughs> we talked about yeah. this with you, I, and Matthias, where mm -hmm. I took the live site and did it over four months, right? As an yeah. experiment. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, uh, you, you know, um, people who have their processes down, um, yeah, there is no reason for them to change. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of unless there is a really uh, something really replacing. Um, uh, that they can do it faster or they can do it um, with less effort, but less, less effort. Some of them are actually paid by the hour. So less effort also means less money unless they raise their prices. Yeah. So um, yeah, there's a, a, a lot of interconnected there. And I, but I, I feel that um, if you, um, if, if you have your process down, you also have your tools geared towards yes. those, yeah, like your template libraries, yeah, or the, the code snippets that you have for uh, for certain things that you always need to fix because it needs to be fixed, yeah, um, or that, yeah, why change it if there isn't a need for it, yeah, and um, just because changing the, 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 the shiny new object, yeah, I mean, Gutenberg is now six years old, seven years old, um, yeah, and the other things are still working just like there were seven years ago, yeah. So um, that is, it, it's definitely a, a personal decision. It's a business decision on how to, to, uh, um, yeah, to handle WordPress for themselves. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know this isn't your area of expertise, but it would be hard getting through a discussion like this without hitting on security for a moment, because we know. Um, I don't know if you saw last week's search engine journal basically had the nerve to write a clickbaity article. Wonder, and so nice of an SEO company to write a clickbaity article. Ba basically saying WordPress has problems because of all these security vulnerabilities. And I would argue as somebody who plays in that space in a major way that no, they don't have a problem. What we're doing is we're disclosing stuff and we're patching it. Where we have a problem is when plugins get abandoned, don't get fixed. That's a different story. And the reason I use that argument is in the Windows world, Microsoft, Microsoft patches security fixes every month on the first Tuesday of every month. It's well known. We on WordPress take care of ourselves. The big vendors take care of things. Security is based on all who we trust, not some SEO company saying we have a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, I know that the WordPress security team is really on top of yeah. things. And they have, um, actually, there's a bounty program there. And I don't know, they don't disclose things, which is maybe one of the uh, the the most rumor building thing if you don't disclose things, but it's also yeah. for security. Yeah, you cannot disclose a security vulnerability even if there is one to warn people unless it's fixed. Yeah, and yeah. there is a um, what what happened was that there was a um, there's a security company out there who discloses vulnerabilities before they are fixed, and then mm -hmm. everybody scrambles because as soon as is um, disclosed, hackers get get on it. Yeah, and within a few hours, yeah, they uh, they probably um, hijack that. But um, I think the the outreach from the community and from the security team to uh, those um, who disclosed it prior to a fix actually have have made some inroads there, and that is kind of really uh, has stopped now. Um, yeah, the the it's something that has been around for I don't know. I'm I'm in the space for 15 years now, yeah. In 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 WordPress space, 15 years no, almost <laughs> well 10 years, yeah. Um, and I always hear it's security, security, yeah. And I I know I had in the early 1200, yeah, 2000, 2015, 2016, I had a few sites that were hacked, but it was on me, yeah. It was kind of it was a non-updated plugin, yeah, that kind of got that had security volunteers and the update wasn't applied. That's certainly one. And then it was um, unsecure passwords. 
Yeah, admin passwords. It's ninety nine. And that has never, and that has never changed with passwords, Bridget. No. I mean, no. it's you know, no. I I hate to tell you, there's a reason the word password or one two three four are, are like on the top of the uh, password hate list. And every year you look at what the passwords are that people shouldn't be using, and those two are right at the top of the list. So people right, don't. Right, and. <laughs> Yeah, and you get the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then the next year it's more secure because it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> <laughs> now yeah. you're making uh, me laugh again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it may, we make fun of it, but it's definitely something that um, a lot of users just don't understand, and I, I don't blame them. Yeah. Uh, but it's certainly something that the hosting companies or their their developers or whoever is helping them with their website is definitely something that needs to be um, looked at and help them with it to understand. There are all um, passwordless situations out there. There's two-factor authentication out there. And I think those two uh, help quite a bit with, with the password problem and getting people assigned to a site. Um, I, that, I that agree. Are, yeah. So the, what I'll tell you is um, right now I'm managing from a security perspective and an update perspective about 300 websites. Yeah. And we've talked, well, <laughs> talked about this before, yeah. Yeah, but I'm always amazed about that number. <laughs> yeah, and all I do on these websites, truthfully, is keep them current, make sure there's backups run that aren't hosting backups that are good and make sure I don't have any security issues. Um, and what I'll tell you is when I did the update to the latest version of WordPress, I didn't have one problem, not one this time around. And that's good. Now, what yes. I also what I also did this time because of all the concern with this release, usually I'm a release comes out on Tuesday, so I jump on the release on Tuesday. I waited till Friday this time. <laughs> So I didn't yeah. have any issues. So people saying they're seeing big issues. I know there's some small ones out there, uh, mm -hmm. but saying they're having big issues. I don't think there's any big issues out there personally. I haven't heard anything, uh, but I I also might not be tuned in well enough um, for this release. It was the first release that I wasn't on the release team yeah. uh, for the last yeah, the five uh, releases before then, I was part of the release team. Um, and of course, I was tuned in quite um, extensively. Uh, but yeah, as long as I don't, I yeah, I don't think the support team has any big issues. I think there were some CSS issues, there were some um, styling uh, class names changes that uh, tripped some people up. But yeah, a, a theme developer can fix them so quickly. Yeah, yeah, that it, it's really not an issue. Yeah. <coughs> I didn't hear anything really big, which is sorry, which is really good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what else is in six point five? Um, so I really like um, the design tools that are there now. The classic themes can uh, have some of the appearance tool, the design tools that are available to block themes now mm -hmm. also available to classic themes. Um, yeah. and, and that is really, and, and can enable them with one command in their functions, uh, PHP or through the theme JSON file. Um, I also like that we have more, uh, freedom on using background images in a group yes. block yeah, yes. where you can tile them, where you can have a certain aspect ratio. Um, and, uh, that is really helpful when you, when you build a website and want to do something special with a with a background image on a on a group block, um, the also drag and drop has been really amazing. How that's progressing, especially in the list view, yeah. When you can, um, it's it's hard on the canvas sometimes to get into one of those container blocks, but when yeah. you do them in the list view, it's so much easier to drag and drop them to a, a different no, group or a different no column. question. Anybody not using the list view should learn it like yesterday because I work with the list view open all the time. And 
the there's the drag and drop is getting it's not all the way there, but it's getting nope. better and it's yeah. making it easier. So we'll get there. Yeah, yeah. But it's uh yeah, it's the the small um quality of life changes actually when you're yeah, a content producer and you do content over and over again, those things really add up in in how, how you feel about your tools. Yeah. Yep. So I agree. Yeah. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head, and I don't know if you remember off your top of your head. What's the release date for six six? Do you know of Berga? Um, I know that the beta is in uh, June, so we're two months out. June fourth, I think, is the beta first. So, and then you can see six weeks afterwards. So it's about July eighteenth is six point six. It's a very short cycle. It's not as short as six point uh, four was. Mm -hmm. But it's it's only a it was only a it's only a two two month window to, uh, to get new features in and um, into the beta one, um, and then um, six point seven is released in November mid November yeah, yeah and before that, and the that, Thanksgiving holiday <laughs> yeah and that's really that's really important I think this is where people listen to the devs we all screamed about December releases you remember those days the first yeah. week of December and I'm working at an e-commerce site in the middle of the Christmas rush saying I don't want to push update on this site <laughs> no and you didn't have to so yeah that's true so yeah. I I think having the last release of the year in November is a much better approach than going December personally yeah me too me too uh, as especially yeah, the it's not only the Thanksgiving holiday it's kind of December is so much distractions from yeah about apart from the e-commerce part yeah but the, the the personal lives yeah are kind of really gearing up for christmas yeah for those who celebrate it or for the end of the year there's a lot of things that in 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 businesses you have end of the year tech stuff yeah it's just so so much nicer to be done with that major release um cycle by mid november and then go into the holidays, into the new year, and wait for March or April for the next one. Yeah, it's a. I'd really like that. Yeah. Is this is this the year where WordPress goes over fifty percent in the internet? I don't think so. <laughs> you don't think so? You think we're going to sit around that 45, 46 percent? No, it, it, it's yeah. It's gonna it's gonna go up, but it's not gonna go over fifty percent there. So there's so much other things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's sitting around that for about four four years now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, why would six months uh, be different? Yeah. I um, think. Uh, yeah. I think coming out of the pandemic, it's kind of flatlined a little bit. I don't think people are doing as much on the web to getting back to a bit of a normal life, to going out and doing things. You know, I think that's mm -hmm. part of it. Yeah, too, to be honest. yeah absolutely. As a, uh, so the pandemic really pushed things. Um, and uh, we saw the dip in uh, 22 21 and 22 yeah we're yeah. not a whole lot of new sites that you you must have seen that in your business yeah that there are uh, not as many new new customers come in or new sites are being built oh i don't know about that i have retail customers they were all going e-commerce so i yeah i saw, I saw, a, yeah. Diff, I saw a different shift and it's yeah. funny when you look at e-commerce I'll, I'll share this with you because it's personal there are mm -hmm. certain things that don't do well online. Uh, clothes is a tough buy online. You know that. Um, eyeglasses. I just bought my mm -hmm. first pair of eyeglasses from an online retailer. And according to my ophthalmologist, only 15% of the people buy eyeglasses online. Interesting, eh? Yeah, very interesting. Very interesting, yeah. So there's some yeah. markets, but we're seeing shifts again. It's, it's real mm -hmm. funny. Yeah, yeah. I I had this uh, in in Munich and probably in every big metropolitan uh, city. There are these farmers market yeah. where you can do your weekly markets, and that's how you do business for the last hundred years, right? It hasn't changed. You go to a stand and then you you talk with the people and let them tell you what they have and where it comes from. And then during the payment process, you have a little chat. So what's the family doing? So it's kind of a, a, a lot more interaction, yeah, but it's just food. Yeah, it's kind of, well, for, for me, our farmer's market is all about food. Uh, but um, uh, yeah, that's something I probably wouldn't buy online. 
um, yeah, we did it a, a few times at, during the pandemic that we had yeah the grocery store kind of delivered yeah. to us. But it's part of the experience is kind of looking at things and talking to people and yeah. I agree. We yeah. we have them here too, and uh, our local one opens up May first. They actually shut the main street down where I am on Saturday mornings for four hours, and wow. I like to walk over there every Saturday because mm -hmm. it's fun, right? Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. So, and and, uh, and in, in small towns, farmers markets in Canada are a big deal because that's all they're social too. They go have coffee, they go buy. Uh, my partner's father is 86 years old and he mm. goes to the food mart in his end of the city every Saturday. And every Saturday we look at him and say, what did you come home with? And every Saturday he looks at us and says, nothing. And we just <laughs> grin and smile. Because that means there's a bag of something somewhere, you know? <laughs> well, uh, yeah, you come also uh, come home with a few more stories, yeah? Especially when you know the people for many, many years yeah, and, or yeah. decades, yeah? So, yeah, you're all up up in, uh, yeah. Yeah, 6.6, yeah. uh, .6, I just pulled it up. Um, the release date is July 16th. I wasn't so far off. I said 18th, but there wasn't. Right so after WordCamp Canada, for those who care. <laughs> right. <laughs> and beta 1 is June 4th. Yeah, I think that I, I remembered well. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, it's two months. Uh, today is, yeah. yeah it's going to be really interesting. Um, it is. Birgit, thank you so much the, for this, as always. Yeah. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. And uh, oh, it's yeah, such a pleasure. And uh, I'm glad to have you back. We'll get you back. I think next time I got to drag you back with that uh, Gutenberg guy. You know who I'm talking about. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's on sabbatical. <laughs> uh, uh, him too. I knew that yeah. too. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Isn't it Matthias. funny how how Matt and Matthias are both gone at the same time? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who who did that? <laughs> oh, I I think there was some collusion on that one. I I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I hope you're well, and uh, um, thank you so so much for having me. And if your listeners are interested in what's coming up for six point six, um, yeah. Anne McCarthy is holding a hangout, a hallway hangout on um, April twenty fourth. Um, at 2300 UTC minus five is um, 1600. Yeah. <laughs> so 4 p.m. Eastern um, and 7 p.m. Pacific. Um, right. So save the date. And um, I, the um, Zoom link is going to be shared in the core um, WordPress for Slack. So, um, and it's also a, a uh, an invitation is on core make slack and then the other thing i'll tell you is if you want to learn more about wordpress releases or the future of wordpress nick diego also of automatic now um nick is speaking at wordcamp canada in july so if you're local to the auto area come on out hear nick talk and uh meet some people yeah it's gonna be real and cool take, yeah. and take a few yeah. stories home that's the best part. <laughs> yeah all right Thanks, Birgit. Have an awesome day. Thanks, Rob. You too. Bye-bye. This show is brought to you by StunningDigitalMarketing.com, your Toronto leader in digital marketing services. Not only do we protect your WordPress website, we can help you with your site, provide social media management for your business, or even do one-on-one -on -one consulting. To find out more, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Thanks to Birgit for joining me on this edition of the SDM Show. Hey, everybody, Rob here again. Thanks for listening to the SDM Show. It's such a pleasure to have you every week. If you want more on our agency website, go to stunningdigitalmarketing.com. We are your WordPress security experts. We'd be glad to help you out. If you want to learn more about me, Rob Cairns, go to meetrobcairns.online. From there, you can find links to everything I do on the web, as well as book time with me. So feel free.
If you want to make comments about this podcast or know a guest possibly suitable for the podcast, please email us at podcast at stunningdigitalmarketing.com. Or conversely, you can go to X, formerly known as Twitter, and tweet at me at Rob Cairns. This podcast is dedicated to my late father, Bruce Cairns. Dad, I miss you very much, and I love you. Please join us next week for another interesting podcast, and have a great week, everybody. Bye for now.